Takashi is a virgin loser who lost his childhood love after she fell for another guy who was packing an extra hinge. However, when their world is turned into a Resident Evil live action, Takashi transforms into the ultimate Jigga Chad, the kind of guy who oozes testosterone and so much that every girl around feels an irresistible urge to smack him. It begins with Takashi, Raid, and Jisashi fighting against Florida residents at their school's rooftop. While they push through a horde, Raid is almost caught until Jisashi steps in like a tier 3 simp to save her sorry ass. As they make their way to the upper platform, Takashi can't help but wonder why you woke up in the Walking Dead universe. The thing is, before this outbreak started, Takashi was all alone reminiscing about his childhood crush Ray, who promised to marry him. However, as they grew older, Ray decided to repeat a class where she fell for Gisashi, leaving Takashi with negative rays. Just then, a pink-haired girl named Saida shows up and starts scolding him for missing his classes. Despite her best efforts, Takashi has put on his best Spike Spiegel impression which drives her off. As he ponders over the lack of plot in his life, he notices a strange man slamming himself against the main gate. Just then, Miss Ayashi and his Twitch subscribers arrive at the door, and one tries to play the macho man to win her over. However, he gets bitten on his arm and dies on the spot, leaving everyone horrified. As they approach him, he gets up and gives Hayashi a love bite, prompting Takshi to run back to his class with his tail between his legs. As he enters the class, he asks Rei to come with him, and explains to Hayashi that a few people have died at the main gate. When Rei tries to act like a bratty teenager, he slaps the wind out of her mouth to get her in line, and the next thing they know, Takashi, Rei, and Jisashi are preparing for a zombie apocalypse. As Takashi breaks the broom to create a weapon, Rei calls his father who is a policeman to come to their rescue. However, she is terrified upon learning that the line is busy, which hints that the world outside their school is more messed up than they thought. Just then, they hear an announcement which informs them of the situation and tells them to evacuate. However, when the announcer is eliminated on the mic, his screams are heard throughout which terrifies all the NPC side characters of the school. With the drop of a chalk, panic ensues inside the school and our trio tries to make their way to the management building to avoid the crowd. On their way, they come across a zombie, and despite Ray's initial reluctance, she brings out her inner martial artist and kicks the zombie's ass. However, despite being stabbed in the heart, the zombie continues to attack, which leaves Ray cornered. Hash as she tries to come to her rescue, but only gets himself bitten in the arm, prompting Rei to beg Takashi to save her only shot at getting laid. Takashi blows open the zombie's head with a bat, and as they make their way to the roof, they are surprised to see that their city looks like the one in Alice in Borderland. They also notice some Defense Force helicopters flying around, making them realize what kind of deep shit they are really in. The school's a mess, with students dying left and right, and then turning into more mindless zombies. They also figure that the only way to defeat them is to smash their heads, but before they can catch their breath, more of their lovely classmates show up to copy their assignments. After dealing with the zombies, they take refuge at the top and block the stairs to keep the zombies below. Just then, Hasashi starts feeling sick from the bite he received earlier and asks Takashi to finish him off before he turns. Takashi can't bring himself to do what he asked, but when he sees how much pain Hasashi is, he gathers all his strength and begins approaching him. Just then, Hasashi dies and is resurrected as a zombie, leaving him with no other choice. With that, Takashi takes a swing at his friend and finishes him off. Meanwhile, Sahya and a fat nerd are running through the hallway, and while Sahya is focused on living, the other guy is more focused on letting the teachers know what's happening in the school. However, Sahya manages to knock some sense into his non-existent brain and gets him on her side. Back on the roof, Rei and Takashi still haven't recovered from losing Hayashi this early but they finally choose to accept the reality and try calling Rei's father from Takashi's phone. This time though, he picks up the phone but is unable to hear Rei's voice due to bad service. He only manages to tell them that the city is in panic mode before the call ends, which makes the situation even worse for Rei. Down in the halls, the fat nerd asks Sohia to call the police for help, but she tells him he wouldn't have said that if he had watched any zombie movies. After explaining to him that they are on their own, they too continue pushing forward with Sahya, lamenting the fact that she's stuck with this thick-brained idiot. Meanwhile, a guy named Kazu is slamming his zombie friend with a pole, while a blonde with Fortnite chug jugs asses the situation. As Kazu rallies her up so they can leave, she's got asked him to wait as she wants to collect some healing items. Just then, zombies break through the windows and bite Kazu, leaving Shizuka defenseless. Just then, a girl with a sword shows up and defeats all the zombies. 
She introduces herself as Seiko and praises Kazun for protecting Shizuka. She also informs him what's gonna happen to him now that he's bitten and even offers to end his suffering here and now. Kazu doesn't want to turn into one of those things, so he asks Seiko to end his misery. In a hardware room, Sahya and the fat guy Hirano are looking through several tools until they find a nail gun that they can use as a ranged weapon. As zombies start knocking on their door like kids on Halloween, Hirano creates a makeshift nail gun to take them down. Seeing his idea work, he goes from the fat kid who got bullied to the cool kid who kicks ass. Meanwhile, Takashi and Rei work together to knock out zombies using a high-pressure water pump. After recollecting their thoughts and sharing a moment of understanding, the two march right down and smack some zombie butt like they were born to do it. Eventually, they make their way down and Takashi suggests going to his house so they can meet up with other survivors. Rei suggests calling his home to make sure his parents are there. But Takashi informs her that his father is out of town and his mother teaches at an elementary school. Despite acting so bad in Banji, Takashi is worried about her mother given the condition of his own school. On the other hand, Saya is throwing wet paper towels at the zombie and learns that they do not react when something hits their body as their senses are all dead. However, they still react to the sound around them. As Saya and Hirano are surrounded by zombies, Shizuka and Seiko are making their way to the faculty room to look for car keys. As they take a breather, Seiko realizes Shizuka's clothing isn't suited for running and rewards everyone with a well-needed fanservice moment. Back down, Hirano runs out of nails for his nail gun, and when zombies close in on them, Saya screams at the top of her lungs, attracting both groups toward her. She tries throwing some trophies at the zombie but to no avail, until she pulls out a drill and creates a hole in the zombie's head. The four of them show up simultaneously and both Takashi and Seiko rush in to help her. After the zombies are defeated, Rei and Shizuka check up on a horrified Saya, while Seiko introduces herself to Takashi. As the introductions fly through, Saida gets frustrated to see them act normal and breaks down by the sheer horror of what she just went through. As her cries echo around the school hall, the rest realize shit it is only going to get worse from here on out. Later, the squad gathers around to watch a news report mentioning the death and destruction all across the city which ends with the reporter becoming food for the zombies. Takashi is frustrated because the news channels are holding back crucial information, but Saya believes it is deliberate to avoid panic. The news further reveals that the outbreak has affected the majority of North America and the White House personnel has been relocated to an aircraft carrier. This implies that the government is thinking of nuking the shit out of the country. After learning that the zombies have spread worldwide, the group is shocked as everything was normal just this morning. Ray hopes things will go back to normal soon, but Seiya tells her to stop being so naive and recalls the previous outbreaks the world has gone through, which almost drove humanity to extinction. They wonder how those outbreaks ended, and Shizuka reveals it happens when there aren't enough humans left to spread the disease. She further says that the walking carriers of this outbreak, Eka zombies might decompose in roughly 20 days, but Seiko believes such a concept won't apply to zombies as they are technically living. She then proposes teaming up to pick up more survivors which will increase their chances of living through this mess. Upon learning that the fastest place out of here is to walk through the main door, the squad marches into the hall and arrives at the inner gate after taking out some zombies. The two brainiacs of the group, Seiko and Sugya, tell them to avoid unnecessary combat and refrain from making sounds. Just then, they notice another group of survivors surrounded by zombies and rush to their aid. After saving the NPC squad, they decide to test if the zombies can see them and Takashi decides to step in his bait. Despite Rei asking him not to, Takashi fearlessly stands between the horde of zombies without them noticing him at all. As one zombie walks by him, Takashi confirms that the zombies are unable to see them and throws a shoe against a wall to draw them away. This allows others to silently walk through the inner gate, except for one of the idiots who decides he doesn't want to live anymore. This causes all the zombies in the area to rush toward their location, and the squad now has to eliminate hundreds of them before they can reach the outer gate. Despite the minor setback, the squad pushes forward, and the NPCs they saved earlier are caught by the zombies in the process. They eventually find an SUV and while Shizuka figures out how to run that old junk, they notice Professor Shido of Class 3A running towards them with his students. When Takashi steps out to help him, Rei urges him to let the man be but he does not listen. After sending three of them ahead, he notices another one who sprained his ankle right at his own feet. Declaring that only the strongest survive, he stomps on his face and makes his way to the SUV with ease. 
She's got then sums up all of her courage and drives over a horde of zombies, which ends with them making it out of the school. The first thing Shido proposes selecting a leader for their survival, and Rei tells Takashi that he will regret saving Shido. As they drive through the destroyed and abandoned city, some of the useless survivors begin arguing about their route. Hearing the commotion, Shuzuka begs them to stop as she can't focus on driving, and the guy shuts up after seeing her bouncy castle. He then claims to have a problem with Takashi for no reason, prompting Rei to step in and knock him out. Shido uses this as an opportunity to propose the idea of leadership yet again and tries to nominate himself as he is their teacher. Making promises bigger than your local politician, Shido manages to score the vote of every stupid character and becomes their leader. Rei is quite frustrated and leaves the SUV as she doesn't want to be under Shido's leadership. But Takashi steps out and urges her to stay calm until they get to the city. As she scolds Takashi for saving Shido despite her warnings, a bus full of K-pop stands drives down in full speed and crashes right next to them. As the dust settles, the tunnel is conveniently blocked by the bus and out comes another horde of zombies on fire. Takashi and Rei are not separated from the group and tell Seiko to meet them at the Easter police station at 7 p.m. As their SUV takes a different route, Takashi and Rei make their way out of the exploding tunnel and are attacked by a biker zombie. After Rei saves his life by knocking the zombie out, she and Takashi begin their journey to the Eastern Police Station. Since Takashi is unable to walk on foot, they decide to take the zombie's bike to get there much faster. On their way, they come across a jet that flies past them, and later, Rei wonders if the pilot will come to rescue them. Takashi tells her to stop expecting any help as they are totally on their own, but Rei wants her to feed him pretty lies. Meanwhile, Seiko and the squad are stuck in traffic when the police start shooting at some approaching zombies. The pathetic pick-me girls get scared at the gunshots, and Shido uses this as another opportunity to assert his leadership. Back on the road, Takashi and Raid drive through the abandoned city and arrive at their neighborhood to find it deserted. Just then, they come across a police car and approach it to find the driver dead. Upon searching the car, they find a fully loaded five-shot revolver and some spare bullets that might come in hand later. Following that, the duo arrives at a gas station but can't fill up the tank because Takashi has no money. When Rei scolds him for buying a drink earlier, Takashi starts ranting about how he isn't as rich as her deadbeat dead boyfriend. As Takashi enters the store to look for some cash, he finds a counter and breaks it open with the baseball bat. Just then, he hears a scream outside and rushes to see Rei held captive by a thug who wants to clap her cheeks. As the bandit gets a handful of Rei's melons, he demands Takashi drop his weapon and fill up the gas for him. Takashi can't do anything about the race situation, so he purposely throws his bat away to attract zombies into the area. As he fills up the gas, he asks the man to let them go as they have to see their parents. The bandit says they are most likely dead given the situation in the city and asks Takashi to move his sorry ass out of there. However, Takashi catches him off guard and shoots his shoulder, allowing Rei to free herself from his grasp. Despite her wanting to take revenge, Takashi tells her to let the man be as zombies have surrounded the area. As they drive away, the man deservingly falls victim to the zombies. In Tokyo, two pilots are ready to take off of the plane, but the track is fully covered with undead zombies. Nearby, a man is guiding his headhunter on the zombies' locations and gives her the green light to shoot. With extreme precision, the woman takes out all the targets on the runway, and the plane prepares to take off. The man then wonders how the people got here given how the only way to the airport is by boat, and the woman, after fondling her sore melons, reveals they are important people and technicians who are needed to maintain the airport. Some of them got infected, but thanks to the dynamic duo, the place is somewhat under control. As the plane flies off, the woman decides to head to the city to visit a friend. Meanwhile, in the SUV, Shido is giving another boring speech about how they should approach this situation and ensure the safety of all the survivors. Hireno is sound asleep with Sahaya wakes him up and reveals that they are still stuck in traffic. Just then, Sahaya notices the plane in the air and figures many people will try to move to areas with lesser population and more ammo so they can fight off the zombies. Hireno mentions a fitting place called Okinawa, and Sahaya thinks about Hokkaido and Kyushu, both of which are strong candidates for defense. However, she believes such places might already have developed strongholds and won't let anyone in so easily. While the two are discussing their chances of survival, Shido is busy seducing the pick-me bitches in the background. When Sunia says things would be much easier if Takashi was here, Hirano figures she might have some hots for her. 
Meanwhile, Takashi and Rei come across a civil war, and Takashi puts on his Ghost Rider persona to drive through the fiery pathway. When the people take a shot at them, he explains to the idiot behind him that people are showing their true selves without any law and order. Just then, they come across the bridge and find it overrun with traffic and zombies, prompting Takashi to take a different route. On the bridge, the police are doing their best to keep the zombies at bay and have even set up a checkpost to make sure no one crosses without inspection. However, a group of teenagers think they are too cool for the inspection and jump over the barricade, causing the police to blow them away with a water cannon. Back in the SUV, Shido is trying to rally up his simps to turn against Takashi and Rei. The main squad is getting worried at how much influence he has on those hoes with daddy issues. Sako says they might need to ditch the bus and continue on foot so they can meet Takashi, leaving Sahaya jealous. She asks Seko about her only family, and Seiko reveals that her father is overseas. The squad then talks about their own families, leading to a moment of bonding between them. This leads to their expedition to the Onbetsu Bridge, and Shido tries to assert his top G status on them. When Seiya shuts him down, he says they are free to leave, with the exception of Dr. Shizuka, who is essential for their survival. However, Hirano scratches him with the nail gun as a warning to stay back and reminds him of all the times he made fun of him. He says he sat through it because he wanted to be normal, but since the world they know no longer exists, no one is going to stop him from going batshit crazy. Isn't where the top testosterone not only impresses Seiko, but also gives them a safe passage out of the SUV, leaving the bed of male embarrassed. Meanwhile, Takashi and Rei are unable to find a way out of the area as the other bridge is in a similar condition. Just then, they hear the sound of the nail gun, revealing that Hirano and the rest are fighting zombies on the bridge. As the zombies overrun the squad, Takashi decides to trust his gamer instinct and perform a GTA 5 stun jump to land on the bridge. As they land, Rei jumps off to help the girls and Takashi gives Hirano his revolver to clear out the zombies. After the bridge is cleared, the two teams reunite and discuss how all the roads leading outside are blocked. Later, they contemplate swimming across the river, but the water level is too high for them to take that risk, prompting Shizuka to call it a day. She says she knows a place nearby they can use for the night, and when they ask if that place belongs to her boyfriend, she quickly explains that it is her female friend's place. She also reveals how her friend is always busy with work and can't use the place often, so she gave her a spare key to air the place out. Since she's oversold the place, Takashi takes her on a ride to survey the area. Later, the squad arrives at the place, and the girls make themselves a comfortable bath. While they do what girls do in showers, Takashi and Hirano break through the lockers and find stacks of ammunition and advanced weapons. Hirano is quite delighted to be in possession of baddest rifles and shotguns, which makes them wonder who Shuzuka's friend really is. Takashi wishes to never use these guns on anyone, but Hirano can't wait to blow off zombie heads for target practice. While they load the magazines, Hirano reveals he went to America, where he got arms training from an expert who used to work for a private military company. The two then discuss how it is illegal to have such weapons in their country, which further hints that Shizuka's friend might be some big shot officer. Furthermore, her place is too fancy for a normal policewoman's paycheck, which is why they believe she must be in the big leagues. Later, Takashi uses binoculars to survey the bridge, which is still barricaded and under the supervision of the police. However, the people are getting impatient, and the police fear that the lockdown will start a riot among the citizens. Additionally, the police chief receives a command from the HQ that they can resort to any means necessary to maintain order. Meanwhile, Hirana spots the news reporters on the bridge, and as they turn on the TV, they realize that the people have started to protest against the lockdown. Not only that, but these people believe that the pandemic started due to a leak from a biological weapon co-developed by Japan and America. While Takashi and Hirano question the reality of this claim, the situation on the bridge escalates as more and more zombies keep showing up at the barricade. The leader of the protest uses this as an opportunity to turn the people against the police, prompting the chief officer to give him a warning. When he refuses to listen, the chief plants a bullet in his brain and settles the issue. Back in the apartment, the girls are finally finished with their bath and Shizuka is in dire need of some sausage. However, Takashi is a gentleman and puts her to sleep alongside Rei, who is worried because she hasn't been able to contact her parents. Later in the night, Takashi arrives in the kitchen and notices Seiko in nothing but apron, which most definitely makes him jizz his pants. Following that, Rei calls her upstairs and makes her feel like a third wheel by talking about how good Yasashi was to her. Takashi taps into his top chi persona and reminds her that her lovely boyfriend is dead 
and he's the one who smacked his head with a baseball bat. Seeing Takashi's Riz go over 9,000, Ray promotes him to the main guy and decides it's time to reward him with some of that guac guac. Meanwhile, the chief has had enough of dealing with the pesky zombies and sends bulldozers across the bridge that not only crush the zombies but also make quick work of the people that were alive on the other side. However, the chief is unable to live with this decision and writes his own name on the death note. Back in the apartment, Takashi is finally getting his daddy juice sucked out of him, only to be distracted by a dog barking outside their place. This causes a large number of zombies to gather up in the area, making him realize they won't be able to leave this place without a fight. As Seiko hears gunshots outside, she joins Takashi and Hirano and sees a man with a shotgun falling victim to the zombies. Takashi wants to be the alpha male and take out the zombies, but Seiko reminds him that engaging with them will cause more noise which will make the situation even worse. After turning off the lights to shoo away anyone coming for their apartment, she gives the binoculars to Takashi and advises him not to act recklessly. Arriving at the balcony, Takashi surveys the area and finds a man and his daughter looking for a place to hide. They enter a house and ask the residents to open the door, but when they refuse, he threatens to break the door with a wrench. This confrontation ends with the man getting impaled with a makeshift spear, leaving the little girl without any guardian. In his last moments, the man asks the girl to look for a palace to hide, but as he passes away, the girl clings to his body and starts crying. This attracts zombies to her location, but Takashi and Hirano decide to take action as they cannot see an innocent little girl being bitten to death. As Hirano shoots the zombies down like he's on a Call of Duty server, Takashi leaves the apartment to save the girl. On the way, he crosses Rei who wishes to join him, but Seiko asks her to let the man do his job. As he leaves, she promises to take care of the rest and Rei gives him a revolver just in case he gets overwhelmed. As he turns his bike on, the zombies are attracted to his location, but he breezes past them with high speeds while Hirano gives him cover fire. Eventually, he arrives at the girl's location, but his bike slips, which makes things a lot more complicated. He finds the girl cowering in the corner protected by the dog and begins chopping down the zombies to rescue her. This causes all the zombies to move towards him, leaving everyone in the apartment with room to escape. But before they can do that, they need to rescue Takashi. Meanwhile, the girl is now somewhat safe, which gives her the time to mourn her father who died protecting her. As the girls gather all of their weaponry and load it in a military jeep, Takashi asks the little girl to sit tight and wait for his friends to show up. However, when he notices dozens of zombies gathering outside, he decides to use the walls to cross the street. Just then, the squad arrives in the jeep and yeets all the zombies to clear the way. As Seko and Hirano hold the zombies back, Takashi manages to get on the jeep, and his mission to rescue the girl is successful. On the aircraft carrier, the US President's Council is urging the man to give them the green light on the nukes. While he is contemplating whether he should go with it or not, the chairman, who was previously bitten, starts turning into a zombie, prompting the guard to shoot him down. Meanwhile, the squad is crossing the river while Hirano and the little girl Arizu sing songs to pass the time. Eventually, they make it to the other side and strangely find the whole area deserted. As the girls get dressed, Hirano briefs Takashi on the Arisu situation, believing that she has lost her mother as well and that they are all she has now. They also rescue the dog from the previous town and decide to name it Zeke after the American Ryzen during the Pacific War. Hirano then hands Takashi a shotgun and teaches him how to shoot and reload it. Just as he gets done with the explanation, the boys are shocked to see all the ladies dressed up and armed like the cast of The Walking Dead. Saya then reveals they are heading to the street to look for supplies and asks the boys to go ahead and cover them. After the boys ensure that the streets are empty, Shizuka drives the jeep onto the road and Sahya uses binoculars to survey the area which shows signs of death and destruction. Unsure of what to do, Takashi proposes heading to Sahya's house since it is the closest from here. As they drive down the road, Takashi seems worried as he hasn't seen any choppers or planes in the sky today. However, Ray tells him to focus on the positives since they have not encountered any zombies in the area as well. Feeling a sense of normality, Takashi peacefully dozes off, only for Hirana to wake him up as he has finally spotted zombies on the road. Shizuka takes the other road to avoid them, but the zombies have that territory covered as well. As they drive through the zombies, Ray questions why all the zombies are gathered in this area alone. It soon hits her what's going on, and she quickly asks Shizuka to hit the brakes, but it's too late, and the car slams into some barbed wires. She tries her best to turn the car around and hit the brakes which ends with Ray flying off the roof and landing on the concrete. As the zombies slowly creep up on her, 
Takashi jumps in like a tier 3 simp and aims to protect her with a shotgun. With instructions from Hirano, he manages to take out several zombies until he runs out of bullets and fumbles to reload. Just then, Seiko steps into the fray to give Takashi enough time to handle himself. However, instead of reloading the shotgun, Takashi grabs the rifle strapped to Ray's back and uses her melons as a recoil cushion to aim it precisely onto the zombies' heads. When Hirano runs out of bullets, he asks Orizu to grab some for him, and seeing her innocent face gives him the motivation to keep going. When the car fails to start, Soya decides to join in on the action and grabs Takashi's shotgun to make herself useful. However, after several hours of shooting in distress, the gang has run out of ammo, but the zombies just keep coming in greater numbers. Seeing no way out of this, Takashi and Seiko use themselves as bait to lure the zombies out of the area, but even that plan doesn't work to the fullest. Now left stranded and surrounded, Hirano decides to drop Orisu on the other side of the barricade so at least she gets to live. However, since her all she has left in this world, she starts begging them to not leave her alone. Just then, a group of people arrives with high-pressure water guns and saves everyone from becoming zombie food. Among this squad is Sahaya's mother, and she is delighted to reunite with her. As they take a moment to breathe, Takashi and Seiko are relieved to see their friends saved. However, their problem hasn't been solved yet as they need to make their way back to the other side of the barricade. Despite the tension, Sahaya shouts that she'll be waiting for them at her house. The dynamic duo bolts through the streets with Takashi, suddenly feeling a newfound zest for life. Eventually, they spot Saya's house from a distance, which is on quite an elevation, prompting them to march into a Yamaha showroom for a new ride. Once there, Seiko spots a jeep that can drive on water as well, and the two decide to take it for a ride. As they drive near the river, the zombies start dropping behind them, making them realize that they cannot walk down stairs or slopes. Despite the falls, these zombies are some tough bastards who get back up like nothing happened. To avoid the incoming zombies, Takashi decides to simply yeet the jeep into the water, leaving Seiko wetter than the first time she got clapped. Eventually, the zombies give up the chase, and the two of them drive the jeep into a sandbar where they decide to rest for a while. Seiko gets cold from all the water splashed onto her, so Takashi helps her dry since she can't make her wet anyway. After she changes into a black t-shirt, Takashi's little Takashi gets a little too excited, and he asks her if she's ever dated anyone before. When Sako says she has a crush on someone, Takashi's chance of scoring drops faster than the fatty who sat down too fast. After the zombies scatter around, Seiko proposes they continue their draw down the road and reach Saya's house before the night falls. As they drive further, they realize they will not be able to reach unless they thin the zombie numbers, prompting Takashi to lure them into the park while Seiko silently takes them out. Since she has no reason to hold back now, Seiko goes all out making Takashi realize how much of a badass she truly is. However, even someone like Seiko is horrified when she sees Minecraft baby zombies strolling in the area. When she is frozen in one spot, Takashi steps in and fires his shotgun to take them out. This naturally causes a loud noise, prompting all the zombies to be attracted to their location. As they haul ass out of there, the duo takes refuge in a temple where Takashi checks up on her. When Seiko stays silent, he realizes it's best not to push her and decides to spend the night in the temple. As the night falls, Takashi explores the temple and finds a real katana and returns his dry uniform to Seiko. After she changes into the dress, Takashi finds her a porta potty which makes her giggle. After she starts feeling better, she explains what she is feeling to Takashi. She says she wasn't frozen in one spot because of the baby zombies, but rather because Takashi asked him if she had dated anyone. She says she is a normal girl who has a crush on a normal guy. But what makes her sad is that she never expressed her feelings. She says she has no right to tell the man how she feels because she almost took a life. Four years ago, she was attacked on the street and smashed the attacker's shoulder blade with her wooden sword. Takashi argues that she was only defending herself, but Seiko says she enjoyed torturing the man. She knew from the start that she had the upper hand and used it to lure the man in as she got pleasure from beating him up. She says she is a crazy woman who enjoys having control over others' lives, and that someone like her does not deserve love. Takashi is in desperate need to get some giant, and tries to relate saying he's done horrible things too. But the difference is that he did it after the pandemic while Sako was a crazy bitch from the get-go. When she says she's only gotten worse after the pandemic started, Takashi takes his chances and ends up clapping her cheeks all night. The next day, the duo acts like nothing happened, and gears up to leave the temple. However, a horde of zombies shows up outside the temple, 
making Takashi wonder how they got here since they didn't make any noise last night. Just then, he notices Seiko still hesitating to fight. So he literally squeezes the juice out of her melon to motivate her, with self-acceptance and a real katana. Seiko slices open the zombies and has fun doing it. As they head downstairs, it is evident that Seiko is willing to suck him dry, if they ever get the chance. One day after reaching Saya's house, the group enjoys their first normal day after the whole pandemic started. Meanwhile, Takashi holds Rei down while Shizuka puts medicine on her back since she crashed her back on the concrete. Rei is quite upset at Takashi, revealing that her chug jugs are hurting because he used them as cushion of the recoil. As he's kicked out of her room, he notices two guys lifting a heavy box and wishes to help them. When they chew him off, Seiko shows up in a cute dress, and the two share a sweet moment. Just then, Arisu and Zeke arrive and Arisu reveals how Shizuka has been taking care of her ever since they got here. While they're chatting, they hear Sahia yelling upstairs, and Takashi checks up on her to learn that she just had an argument with her mother. As her mother shows up, he says he's used to Sahia's bratty behavior, since they've been friends since kindergarten and compliments the enormous house they live in. He also reveals how this is the first time he ever visited this house since he was intimidated by the guards outside. Meanwhile, Hirano is in the garage working on something when Saya shows up and tells him to enjoy while they can because they won't be staying for long. When he questions why, she says it's hard to maintain electricity and water in a place this big. Meanwhile, Takashi learns from Saya's mother that the commander of the SDFs sent his forces to the power plants at his own discretion to make sure the country doesn't lose power. However, the people working there will maintain it for only so long and eventually return to their families, which is why they can't stay here. Back in the basement, Mr. Mato scolds Hirano for playing with guns, but Saya tells him to get his ass moving. Before leaving, he reveals that the workers have tuned up their ride, and it's good to go again. Hirano is impressed by the power Saya holds in this house, but Saya is frustrated about the fact that elders think they know more about the world than them. As she decides to talk to Takashi, her mother simultaneously tells the man to knock some sense into her daughter. Later, Sayed gathers them all in a room and questions if they should continue to work as a group or not. She says they've merged with another group, and their only options are to either expand or separate. Takashi thinks it's better to stay with Saya's parents since they seem to know what they are doing. But that is exactly what ticks her off. When Takashi politely asks her not to say bad things about her parents, she lashes out at him instead. She expresses her frustration, stating that her parents took drastic measures to protect themselves but never really looked for their daughter, because she thought she wouldn't have survived it. Hearing her yap like a whiny bitch, Takashi takes the choke me daddy part too seriously and reminds her how lucky she is to see her parents in good health, unlike the rest of them. Saya's eyes aren't the only thing wet from getting manhandled, so she quickly snaps out of it and gets back to the topic. Just then, they hear cars outside and check to see that. Saya's father, the head of the Takeda family, has arrived. The man has his best friend, turns zombie on display for the others, and reveals that he lost his life saving others. However, since he's no longer human, Takeji takes it upon himself to honor his friend's memory. This sends the message to the people that no matter how close your relations are to each other, once one of you turns into one of those things, you have to put an end to it without hesitation. As he leaves, Hirano laments about the inefficiency of Japanese katana, which can break upon hitting the bone. Despite Seiko telling him that it depends on the person wielding the blade, Hirano isn't too comfortable taking that chance. This causes tension between the group. But Arisu decides to take it upon herself to make things right between Hirano and Takashi, stating that they have become too relaxed in the Takaga mansion. This reminds Takashi of his 8th grade when his teacher told them about the British military ship that reached Tahiti after a rough voyage. After spending six months in that paradise, a mutiny broke out between the crew who were so accustomed to the easy life in Tahiti. Takashi can't help but compare that situation to their own, knowing all too well that the world out there is harsh and dangerous compared to life inside the mansion. Just then, Arisu comes running in and reveals that Hirano is in trouble and they have to help him ASAP. Meanwhile, Saya finds Seiko sitting beside a pond admiring the beauty of the koi. As they discuss the possibility of splitting their group, Hirano finds himself captured by the guards while making his escape with a bunch of weapons. Just then, Takeda shows up and questions why he was running away with the guns, prompting Hirano to reveal that these weapons bring out the Jaga Chad in him. Just then, Takashi shows up and reveals that Hirano has been using these guns to protect Stahia ever since the pandemic started. And soon after, all the members of the Origin squad show up to back the fat bastard. Saya finally stands up to his father, 
stating that Hirano has been doing what her own incompetent father couldn't do, which is to protect her. Later, Sayedab gathers the residents and tells them that the dead are walking on the streets, but the people refuse to believe it and think it must be some kind of an infection that is being presented with exaggeration. However, Saya brings out her dominant mommy side and sternly tells them to follow orders if they want to live. When she reminds them of what happened to her father's best friend, a stupid woman in the audience claims that the Takeda family is trying to rule them with fear. When Takashi steps up to knock some sense into them, he is told to back off as he's merely a high school kid. As the crowd begins protesting against violence, Saya, Takashi, and Hirano discuss the absurdity of these people. However, Hirano mentions human nature to deny tragedy, which reminds Takashi of the time he couldn't believe he had lost, stated Hasashi. This is exactly why people refuse to believe what's happening outside, even after seeing it with their own eyes. This whole conversation somehow ends with Sahaya and Hirano backing up Takashi for being their leader. In the meantime, Takeji recognizes her talents and gives Seko, a rare double-edged Kasaki Moroa, which is rumored to have been unscratched even after splitting a pig's skull in two. When Seko refuses to wield such a legendary blade without a legitimate reason, Takeki says he once received training from Master Bush Ujima, who happens to be Sako's father. He wants her to have this blade and give it to her father as a token of gratitude. She tells him to give it directly to her father, prompting Tagaki to laugh at the sheer honesty of Seiko. After briefly talking about Saya, Seiko asks Takeji to give the sword to their leader Takashi. However, according to Takaki, Takashi is an unfit leader because he is still hesitating. Meanwhile, Takashi is in his room doubting himself when Rei shows up and reminds him of his heroics. However, he claims that Seko, Hirano, and she are the real heroes while he just stays on the sidelines. So Ya, yeah, on the other hand, is the brains of the group, and Shizuka serves as a doctor. Rei leans onto her shoulder and reminds him of all the times he's risked his life to save others, which is why she wants to be clapped by him. She says she would understand if Takashi doesn't feel the same way and expresses regret for leaving him high and dry the first time. As they are about to hit the classic missionary, Rei's back hurts from the accident earlier, so she decides to do it some other time. Upon leaving the room, she finds Seiko waiting outside. Meanwhile, an SUV arrives outside the mansion, and the girl inside begs the guards to let them in. The guard jizzes in his pants upon seeing her melons, but little do they know, it's all Shido's scheme to get himself to safety. Meanwhile, Takashi is briefing Tagaki on their parents' situation, and wants to leave the mansion to find whoever they can before they leave. Just as he packs up to leave, Rei spots Shido entering the mansion and rushes down to smack his butt. As he pretends to be an angel for saving so many students, he reminisces about his father who is a politician and only brought suffering to his family, to the point that he drove his own wife to game in herself. The man even used Shido to take revenge on Rei's father by making her repeat a grade, which is the main reason why she and Takashi grew distant. Just then, Rei shows up with a rifle and wants to punish him for not only making her repeat that grade but also making her father's life hard. She always knew it was Shido who did this but remained quiet because she hoped Shido would be arrested if the investigation went smoothly. However, since the world has already gone to shit, she does not care anymore and wants to take revenge. Just then, Tagaki shows up and tells Rei to finish the man off since he no longer needs to have good relations with his father. Takashi has heard everything and wants to stop her but Seiko reminds him that she has to make this choice for herself. Meanwhile, Shido is tempting Rei to fire the gun and tells him that she will be haunted by her actions for the rest of her miserable life. Despite wanting to give him a death by a thousand cuts, Rei deems it all a waste and spares his life. Following that, Shido and his students are kicked out of the mansion, leaving them with no place to go. Meanwhile, the US president has given the order, and the nukes are fired to end this pandemic once and for all. Not only the US but Russia has also shot their nukes, and the world is on the verge of going to absolute shit. As several nations engage in a war of missiles, some Japanese defense operators manage to destroy a nuclear warhead mid-air. Meanwhile in the mansion, Shizuka is overjoyed because she finally remembers her friend's phone number, who belongs to the special assault team. After calling her and addressing her by the name of Rika, Shizuka is relieved to find her alive. However, before they can even talk, the signal cuts out and they see a bright light in the sky. Saya so suspects something and asks Ray to check the laser dot on the gun, which appears to be absent. Meanwhile, the whole city has lost power, a man gets a heart attack, and Shido's SUV fails its brakes, causing him to crash with a tow truck. Back in the mansion, Saya reveals that the bright light came from an explosion of a nuclear warhead, which has spread a wave of EMP across the globe, rendering most electronic systems useless. 
This means that everything that works with electricity is dead, except for the self-defense force and government agencies who have applied anti amp measures beforehand. As Takaga shows up to ask how they can salvage this situation, Saya tells them that some cards will work if they simply replace their fried parts, prompting his father to compliment her calm demeanor. Just then, they hear guns shots coming from the main gate, where a guard falls victim to the zombies. Takeji orders his men to close the gate, but before they can do so, one zombie manages to slip in. Hirano uses this opportunity to showcase his skills and takes it down with a single shot. Just then, a servant comes donning a briefcase, and Saya's mother opens it up to give her daughter a Luger pistol for self-defense. While Hirano drools over this legendary pistol, Saya reveals she doesn't even know how to hold it let alone fire it. When Saya asks why she has guns in the first place, her mother reveals she took a self-defense course whilst working with Wall Street and she might even be a better shot than Takagi. She then asks Hirano to show Sahaya how to shoot, and he happily accepts. Just then, more zombies gather at the door, and the guards are unable to hold it down. As the main gate falls, several dozen zombies march into the mansion and destroy the resident camps. Seeing the chaos, Takashi, Seko, and even Rei jump into action to thin their numbers, while Hirano gives them cover fire from the balcony. However, there is only so much they can do, and after some time, while whole garden is crawling with zombies. As the residents look for Tagaki to save their asses, he tells all the men in the camps to gather up and prepare for battle. So yeah, I suggest barricading the main building, but Tagaki is certain it won't hold given how they broke through an iron gate. When Takashi shows up, he asks him to leave in search of his parents and even asks Hirano to take care of his daughter. When Soya protests, her mother slaps the wind out of her mouth and tells her to not make this any harder than it already is. Realizing her parents are risking their own lives to protect her, she agrees to go with Takashi and the rest. As they run into the garage, they learn that their military jeep had anti amp measures installed in it, and after minor repairs, it will be as good as new. All they have to do is hold down the garage while Mr. Matsudo repairs it for them. As they prepare to leave, they ask Matsudo to join them, but he refuses, stating that his interests lie somewhere else. With that, Shizuka steps on the paddle and drives through the mansion. After two wheeling through a narrow pathway, the squad is in the clear and Takashi takes this time to remind them that he and Rei need to find their parents. Arrive at the highway that looks like it's been through the Dying Light universe, Takashi, Seko, and Hirano step out with their weapons, ready to clear the path for their team. That's it for this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe to our channel for similar content. Thanks for watching, we'll see you at the next one.